In this video, we'll discuss blood-brain barrier. So what's the function of blood-brain barrier? Blood-brain barrier prevents certain substances from entering the brain. Not every substance can enter into the brain. Why? Because there are tight junctions between the capillary endothelial cells and the brain epithelial cells in the choroid plexus, especially preventing protein entry into the brain. For example, acid dye, ripe and blue, is Stains all body tissues except brain and spinal cord. So what substances enter brain? Only oxygen, carbon dioxide and water can readily cross the cerebral capillaries and cross the blood-brain barrier. Glucose crosses blood-brain barrier slowly, but glucose transporter GLUT1 helps glucose to enter the brain and electrolyte cross the blood-brain barrier more slowly. So oxygen, carbon dioxide and water, they readily cross the blood brain barrier glucose enters the brain slowly with the help of transporter and electrolytes cross the blood brain barrier more slowly in general fat soluble substances or lipophilic substances dissolve in the cell membrane and cross the blood brain barrier easily for example alcohol and nicotine whereas water soluble substances such as penicillin have difficulty in getting through the blood brain barrier now in what conditions blood brain barrier is broken. It's broken after trauma, tumor, infection, radiation and if there is a sudden increase in blood pressure. What happens if blood brain barrier is broken? Loss of tight junction breaks the blood brain barrier. So the substances which normally do not enter the brain, they enter into it. So the diagnostic substances in this condition will also enter the brain and this makes it possible to detect the abnormalities or diseases in the brain. Cerebral capacity capillaries are more permeable at birth than adulthood. Wild pigment do not cross the blood brain barrier in adult brain but they cross the infant blood brain barrier and deposit in the basal ganglia causing chernectrus. So in adults bile pigments do not cross the blood brain barrier but in infants they do and they deposit in the basal ganglia causing chernectrus in neonates. Now the ways to enter into the blood cross the blood brain barrier. Fastest way to get a drug in into the brain is inhalation by a snorting or sniffing through the nose. The second fastest way is by IV injection to get a drug directly into the brain. For example, amongst the opioids, heroin which is inhaled is absorbed very quickly and produces a high, whereas morphine which is also an opioid, 50% of the dose is metabolized while passing through the liver, the first pass metabolism and does not produce a high. And number three, injection is a slow mode of delivery for example alcohol so inhalation is the fastest mode of entering into the brain and the second fastest way or route is IV injection and injection is the slowest way drugs crossing the blood brain barrier sulfadiazine for example especially sulfamethoxazole plus trimethoprim and erythromycin they readily cross the blood brain barrier and enter the brain free ibuprofen and indomethacin rapidly cross the blood brain barrier and penicillin and chlorotetracyclines have very limited crossing so amongst the drugs sulfadiazine and erythromycin readily crossing the blood brain barrier also free ibuprofen and indocin they rapidly cross the blood brain barrier by while penicillin and chlorotetracycline they cross it slowly so what are the functions of the blood brain barriers they maintain the environment in the brain by maintaining csf composition number two they protect the brain from exogenous and endogenous toxin. Blood brain barrier is both a structural and functional roadblock to microorganisms. And number three, it prevents escape of neurotransmitters into the general circulation.